What is up internet world and welcome back to Accelerate. I'm Mike, he's Ian. Today we bring the BMW Z4 M40i. What is up BMW faithful? We have ourselves a front engine, rear wheel drive, convertible BMW, and it's called the Z or Z4, depending on where you live. Now it's manufactured in the same plant as the Toyota Supra. And we're not first to review this car, we're probably the last, because that's what happens when you're on YouTube sometimes. This is convertible, for starters. And number two, if you're tall and want something more luxurious and sporty, well, this is what you're looking at. And when you look at a Z4, you never actually think Supra, because that narrative is kind of out the window but it's also slightly different. The gearing is slightly different. The RPM torque and horsepower is slightly different at different levels than the Supra. The Supra has more top end performance. The BMW has more bottom end performance. This is a BMW, not a Toyota. Here we are, Z4 M40i with 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque out of a three-liter turbocharged inline six-banger. I've got it in Sport Plus. Traction control is in activated position, which means I can slip a little bit to the ground. I will not try to get launch control on this thing because I like it done this way. Just as I ease into it, the car goes. I find that's better, to be honest. Let's try it. There we go. Okay, good launch, my boy. What do we got, what do we got? 3.96! Fun, man. Fun. Controllable fun. So your Z4 or Z4 is built in Graz, Austria. Now the car is built in Austria side by side to the Supra, but the body and shell is actually built in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Now it's available in two trims, the S Drive 30i with a starting price of 53,600 and this, the M40i with a starting price of 66,300. Beautiful white interior, don't you think? To the front of this purple BMW, this paint is called Thunder Knight Metallic. Now BMW also has individual colors that look similar to this, but I checked the code on the side, it's called C56, and that's the paint code for this BMW Thunder Knight Metallic. Now if we start at the front here, you will see that it has BMW LED headlights, and you have two distinct DRLs, one a little bit smaller at the top, and one a little bit bigger on the bottom. They are projectors, and they are beautiful, including this really long front hood. And then you have these really wide kidney grills in high gloss black. I've noticed there's no camera in the front of this BMW Z4. However, there are Parktronics to beep when you get close to a vehicle in front of you in a parking lot. You do have functional vents in the lower front bumper, which is nice, but it's a sports car and it's a BMW. That's to be expected. 
to the side of the Z4 that has perfect 50-50 weight distribution. That's a BMW staple that they forgot to talk about all these years, but the Z4 is something that they focused on because convertibles are actually hard to get 50-50 weight distribution because all the weight is right here at the engine, but they managed to do it. Now, if you bought a Supra, you can only get it as a coupe, and if you bought a Z4, well, you can only get it as a convertible, a soft top convertible, not a hard top. So we start with the front here, you have M specific alloys that are only designed for the Z4, part of that 50 50 business. Now, you have on the front, you have Michelin Pilot Sport Super Fancy Tires. They're not Michelin 4S's, but they're a Pilot Super Sport, and they are 255 35 19. And on the back, you have 275 35 19. Now, as we move down, the air flows up and over the rim and then onto the back side of this inner fender liner and through the side here and that's how the air flows on this Z4. You have an M badge right there. This on the inside is high gloss black that's surrounded by this Thunder Knight metallic. Then you have a piano black or gloss black on the mirror and then more gloss black up the A pillar on this convertible. More gloss black on the top. Basically, there's no chrome, and then you end up with your 275, 35, 19s, like I talked about, that are M specific. Now, all that fancy stuff is important, but the most important piece here is how fast is this convertible top, and it does it in 10 seconds. Yep, she goes down in 10 seconds. So to the back of the Z4, see how this rear spoiler is integrated into the sheet metal of the rear trunk lid? That is a nice touch as opposed to adding one after the fact. You have the M40i badge right there. You have the third brake light hiding underneath this rear spoiler. And then the Z4 right there in sort of a satin gray or platinum finish. Then the BMW badge, pretty straightforward. And then of course you have your Parktronics there and then a rear camera. That's pretty difficult to hide the rear camera underneath there. On the bottom, your rear valence here is also finished in a gray though, not the same color, or at least it doesn't look like the same color from here. Now when buying a convertible, it's important to note how much trunk room there is because convertibles rarely have any. So as far as depth go, you have 32 inches. And as far as width goes, now we'll take the widest part, you have 43 inches. And as far as the entry point, you have about 15 inches. Now it's important to note, if you do have longer items, you do have a pass through, you can put stuff through, but there is no storage underneath this rear shelf or the floor, I should say, because there's the exhaust. Yep, the exhaust is tucked right underneath that spot right there. Front seat of the BMW Z4. Ooh, I love this white interior, sweet. Now, I normally start off with the door panel, but I'm gonna talk about this back shelf right here. You have 12 speakers in your BMW Z4. You also have a pass-through like I talked about in the trunk, very easy to access. And then you have this netting that's probably about four inches high and about three inches deep and then stretches from end to end of the vehicle. So, door panel time. You have two memory seats. You have a white insert to match the seat itself. Then you have this speaker grill that's pretty cheap. It's plasticky, listen where it should be really aluminum or steel or something, something of quality. It's a BMW after all. Then you have a small tiny strip of ambient lighting. And then if we move to the dash on the left-hand side here, you have your automatic lights. Then you have piano black all the way around and you have, you have a good, decent driver display, but it's not the latest BMW. Same with this infotainment right here. It's kind of the last generation, I would say. You have an M style BMW steering wheel that is heated and nice and soft. This steering wheel is excellent. I've had it on other BMW product. It's thumbs up for me. It does have paddle shifters. On the left-hand side, I have all my cruise control and keep you in your lane stuff on the left. And on the right, I have my volume controls and my telephone information buttons. And then moving down from the screen, you have a small strip of ambient lighting. Moving down from there, you have two items that are pretty traditional BMW, your classic HVAC controls and your classic volume controls, as well as eight presets just done lightly with my finger. This stuff has been disappearing. So thank you for keeping it on the Z4. Then you have your center console that has a slider that says Z4 on it. When I push it back, I have a wireless charger for my cell phone. I have a USB and then I have a 12 volt cigarette lighter. Now, when I pull this back, I have very traditional gear shifter. Then you have your different drive modes, sport, comfort, eco pro, auto hold, electromechanical parking brake. And then of course your whoop and whoop to move your convertible top up and down in 10 seconds. And then you have this little rotary knob that adjusts your little infotainment up there. But you do have jump back on your satellite radio, and I love that. I hear a tune I like, I hit jump back, boom, I get to hear it again. I love it. As far as the seats, 
because they are last but not least, but they're the most important part of this BMW Z4. You can have manual adjustment to have leg extensions, and then you can press this button and it squeezes your back together. Thumbs up. Well, there's more thumbs up. And that's the top of these seats. They are stitched in a really cool way. They have this silver piping on the side, and then you have this little gloss black, little, little hole right there. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe you could tell me. So there is a complaint about this Z4, and that is this. When I push this button in, it opens up this center console. Now you can see they're two different sizes. This is really wide and this is really skinny. And that is because this wide part is for the cup holders right there. And then you have a USB-C. But the problem is, is when you have a cup holders here, the passenger has nowhere to put their arm. I do though. So that's the most important part. So now BMW says they're not gonna make a Z4M because there's just not enough volume. They can't build it and make money. They can build it, but then make no money. So they make this, which is probably the closest thing they're gonna ever make to it. Yeah, sweet. She rips. I find, you know what, I'm gonna be honest. I find that all these M, not full M cars, but the M40 cars, all rip really well. The BMW X3 M40i killed it. The 340i kills it. This thing as a 40i kills it. I'm, I'm feeling what BMW is doing here. I feel like the M cars are just too much, too, too track focused, too stiff. The seats are, are good, but they're too stiff. But this thing is like the right amount. This is like the sweet spot. I'm not sure I'm not the first person that said that, but I do believe so. I'm like, I'm feeling these M 40 cars, man. I dig it. I dig it. Power and oh, nice. Just cool. I love the one the back end comes out, but ever so gently. It's a fun car to drive, man. It's smooth, fast. So I obviously cannot compare a BMW Z4 versus a Toyota Supra. They just are different. This is way quieter when I'm in comfort and more comfortable and has more insulation and more expensive and it's a BMW, not to be snotty or anything. But the, ah, the Supra is very good when you put a sweet body kit on it in black, the right wheels, the car looks dope. It looks like liquid black. I love the way it looks. But this also holds its own. It does have really good lines. The back end looks like it has some adulthoodness to it. It doesn't feel like a child's car. And man, this handles really well. This limited slip holds you in. I mean, pulls the car in sideways. I'm alive. Oh, I'm alive. I'm alive. Don't worry, guys. I'm alive. I'm alive. So I'll leave you with something to comment on. Do you think that the Z4 now can also be in the male market? Because in the past, Z4s, women only bought them. And Supras, only dudes bought them. I'm not sure there's an outlier here and there. But for the most part, it was like, yeah, I want a cute little convertible that felt more like a touring, but wasn't as expensive as some of the bigger touring GTs. Well, the Z4 was for you. And the Supra, well, I mean, I don't even know a girl that has one on the internet, but that's just make-believe. So let me know in the comments below if you think that the Z4 now, you can mix it up, it's co-ed, and the Supra is still male dominant. Let me know in the comments below and we'll catch you on the next one.